the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against the avarice of any kind. For a man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, what am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, my soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul. And this horde of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when a man stores up treasures for himself in place of making himself rich in the sight of God. The gospel of the Lord.
kubo ke chine nyemu obo ya kamu ne chere ni muwa aga gi manyi si aga gi menu pisi ana ne chere aku chi mu nyemu eli gwe be manyi ne chere kwa ndi so kanyi chori wanya meza ya biko nye no mikeki kamata kumo aku aka Odigi kwa no bi manu Odigi kwa ne chiche manu Anya u begi ti anu begi Iye chine ke kwa doro dia Ulo ma di ne liwe Ulo ma e akwaka Odi ne liwe Ulo ma e odi ne liwe His righteousness, who put a do and so go, or that is Najara, make him see the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, who put a do and so go, or that is Najara, Jara, 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 education, Najara, body, Najara, beauty, Najara, thank you, Najara. Najara, Fiji, Najara, Jara, oh, Jara, oh, oh, Jara, oh, Jara, oh, Jara, 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 oh, Najara. Hallelujah! Oya, 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 oya. you. May the Lord give you a long life. May he preserve the treasures that he has given unto you. And may you live long to enjoy the benefits of God in your life in the name of Jesus. And every source, power or force that is programmed to cut short the availability of life that God has given to you to enjoy the benefits of your life. May those powers be stopped in the name of Jesus. And may your trust in God be a vehicle of excellence for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you say something to somebody this morning? Good morning. You're welcome in the name of Jesus. And also our special friend and teacher and the person of the Holy Spirit. He is our source of strength and power. Because the word of God says we are two or three are gathered in his name. There he is in their midst. May his abiding presence give us life. And may our efforts not amount to vanity of all vanities in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us sit. from our reading particularly the gospel reading in fact the gospel reading and the first reading 
taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, I just want to reflect with you on greed, the thief of life. Greed, the thief of what? Life. We know what a thief is or who a thief is. A thief does what? Steals. And Jesus says, the thief comes to do what? Steal, kill, and do what? Destroy. So, greed is a thief that steals your life and sometimes leads you to eternal damnation. But that is not what God designs for us. He designs that we live a life of blessedness and come back to him to enjoy eternity. But that most times is being denied by the fact of greed in us. Like I said at the first mass, a man had money. He got money, so he acquired 40 acres of land. And then when he looked at the land and what he wanted to do, he discovered that there was not enough, so he desired to acquire more. So he sold that one, got more money, added to it, and bought 80 acres of land. And then that one, was not, he was not satisfied with that, so he decided to get more. And one of his friends came to him and said to him that there is a community when you climb the mountain and descend. That community, they live very simple life. They have large expanse of land. If you go there, you will acquire much. And so he decided to go there the next day. And when he arrived, the chief received him and said, fine, we will give you land, but you will only do one assignment and the land will be yours. He said, they will give him the land as much as he's able to walk. If he is to walk from here to Lagos and come back on the same day before the sun goes down, they will give him the land. So the man said, okay. So the next morning he arrived. And then they pinned something, the first point of the movement, and he started on that journey. And so he journeyed and journeyed. They will use horsemen to follow him, to guide him to wherever his energy could carry him. So he kept going and going and going and going and going and going and going until he noticed that the sun was going down. So he had to turn, to return. So you can imagine the distance he had covered. He needed, imagine you going to Lagos that same day and coming back before the sun goes and is it possible? So he struggled. And when he discovered that time was running after him, he began to run and run and run and run and run. And before the sun went down, he was able to get back to the first point. But on arrival to the first point, he fell down with his face on the ground. And so the chief walked up to him and said, congratulations, you made it. But there was no word. He had died. They turned him only to discover that he was a dead word man, exhausted because of what? Greed. He wanted to acquire the whole land. In our text today, the man who came to Jesus came to complain about what? Inheritance. Everybody say inheritance. inheritance. Many families today are torn apart because of what? Inheritance. Your brother and your brother are struggling two pieces of land your father or two parcels of land your father left for you. So in the process, he says, I'm the first son, so I should take more than you. He said, no, it's your father, it's my father. The next thing, you land in a Jew shrine. And you say, I'm a Christian, I will not go. And probably you're not a praying Christian. The next day, you die. Or your brother poisons you because of that struggle for land, inheritance. And why is it that probably your brother wants to get more than every other person because of what? Greed. You've made money. The land is there. Nowhere to build. You cannot even buy. What you have cannot enable you to buy land and still build a house. And you go to your brother, let me have a part of this land to build. And he says, no. 
and then you report him to the elders, they judge it and they give him a portion. They said, over his dead what? Body. And eventually, over his dead body, you build a house on top. Greed. Greed. But my dear friends, that is not the idea of God. God gives us blessing for some reasons. First, for your comfort. That's one of the reasons that God gives you blessing. He gives you blessing again for kingdom advancement. And then the other one is for helping others to grow. Because every blessing from God, call it money, call it wealth, call it riches, or even wisdom and knowledge, just like the, 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 the singer sang. Tony, what is that thing you sang? He sang something. He said, whether singing gift or whatever gift you have is not from you. It's all what? From God. And then he titled it, Jara, o, Jara. Eh? Jara, o. It's all Jara from what? God. In order that our life here will be comfortable. And in that again, God's blessings are from him to us. And from us, from him to us, so that through us, that blessing will get to another person. And eventually, you realize, or we must realize, that every achievement of our life is not achievement, but is a trust given to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That you are rich is not because of your energy. Is a trust given to you by God. That you have money today does not mean that it is out of your strength. It is a gift of God. That's why James chapter 1 verse 17 will say, Every good gift is from what? God. For the benefit of you and others. And if we realize that, then we must pay homage to him. It must not be yourself. When you allow yourself to rule, then it becomes greed. In our text of scripture this morning, the man was talking about himself. I, I am rich. My bands, I will destroy my band. I will store up. And when I have stored, then I will tell to my soul, you have enough now for so many years. Relax and rest. Dear friends, God gives us these blessings, these abundance for us to be able to navigate through certain fundamental aspects of life. One of them is to navigate away from survival. Survival of the what? Of the fittest. Survival of the fittest. Carpenter. Bricklayer. Owabogene. Gandolema. Owabongene. Ndole ndole. God does not want us to dolly Allah. He wants us to be what? Move to the next level. And that next level is comfort. And then from comfort to the life of what? Luxury. And then from the life of luxury to what? Extravagance or abundance. But dear friends, children of God do not need survival level and also extravagance. These two are two dangerous extremes. Survival, the struggle for survival can breed frustration, loss of hope and trust in God and you fall apart. And then extravagance or abundance can also lead you to forget God that it is all God's grace and gifts. And then it makes you to re not to realize that you are a steward of the benefits of, bene of the good things that God has given to you. But the level of comfort where you are able to do things you're supposed to do. And then the level of luxury 
you have a need to buy a car, you get, you get a car, you do things for yourself. Now when these are done, the essence why God gives this blessing just like he blessed that man in text of scripture are for redemption of time. And then also for efficiency. That is the essence why God gives us that. What do I mean by redemption of time? By redemption of time, you know that as we celebrate this mass this morning at 8 a.m. and then the 10 a.m. mass, at the end of it, probably we have the, my anniversary there in the hall and we'll finish. And maybe by 3.30 today, you call me on phone and you say, Father, please, I'd like to see you. And I say, sorry, please, I'm in Lagos. And you say, how? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I celebrated three masses, attended the occasion, and by 4.45 this evening, I am in Lagos. And I tell you, okay, meet me by 7.30 because I'll be taking the last flight from Lagos to Port Harcourt. And at 7.30, you meet me. Time had been saved. Why? God has given me the abundance to be able to pay for flight because I have the luxury to pay for flight to and what through. So with that, time is saved. When God has given you that luxury, then you are able to save, you are able to do a lot of things. Some of us who work from Monday through Sunday, then six, four, two, four, what? Seven. You save the time. And then when that happens, it then brings mental stability. It brings physical stability. It brings psychological stability and it brings spiritual word stability or you use the word prosperity these are the reasons why god gives us the blessing and with that time is saved and then efficiency when god has given you these blessings that you have it at your back and call and you have the luxury you can navigate through circumstances you can establish something Employ somebody to manage it and you supervise. You perform two, three tasks at the same time. With the fact that God gives me the luxury of being able to pay a flight to Lagos, about hundred and something thousand naira in a day, to and fro, then I will be able to go, attend to whatever I'm going to do in Lagos. In fact, to go to Lagos was that I'm going to collect a check of 2.5 million. I collect it and come back. And by tomorrow morning, I am here for morning mass and for our fellowship. That makes you efficient. That is the blessing of God. And that's what God gave to this man. Why he said, I will break my bands. But he was selfish. He did not attribute that to God. Just like the word of God will tell us in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. You are steward of whatever God gives you. And then my dear brothers and sisters, God gives us this blessing so that our relationship with him will be strengthened when we realize that every good thing that we have comes from him. The psalmist in Psalm 24 will say that. Everything belongs to God. He has founded it upon the surface of the earth. And then Psalm, 1, Psalm 50 verse 10 to 11 will again establish the fact that God is the owner of everything that does exist. So you must give back to God. This man was supposed to give to God. He was supposed to honor God. He was supposed to use it for kingdom advancement. To support the evangelization. And then the reaching out of God's word to so many other people. But he was engrossed in himself. And with that, God said he is a word fool. My dear brothers and sisters, when we act that way, we are foolish. Whatever gift we have is for time. And God purposes it for us in order that we might excel. And through that, he will perfect the universe through our cooperation with him. But when greed takes over you, you will be self-centered. And when you are self-centered, even the blessing that God wants to bless someone with through you will be stuck. 
Now when God gives this blessing, he is the originator of the blessing. He gives to you. And then you are supposed, through you, you are supposed to be a channel to bless another person. And that person sits out there to pray to God. God bless me. Give me money. Give me oppor job opportunity. And you are holding it because of greed. This man will not be blessed. And it does as if God is not listening. God hears the prayer and God says, all the money you need in this world are here. Your brother is supposed to extend a hand of fellowship. So the brother gets stuck and dies in poverty. Greed. And so the word of God challenges us today that we must learn to grow above that. It is not what you acquire. Your life is not measured by what you have. But rather by the relationship that you establish with God, with your brother, the interconnectivity of human relationship is what makes you knowledgeable and a man of wisdom and a man of substance. That's what the Lord Jesus will say. You cannot say both God and what? Money. And he says the life of man is not determined by what he or she has. Greed is the chief of life. When you are greedy, you can kill. James, having to talk about that in James chapter 4, verse 1 following, he says, Why all the quarrels among you? Why all the fighting among you? Where do they come from? He says, it comes from desires for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. And because of it, you go extra miles. You want this, but you cannot have them, so you are ready to do what? Can I hear you say that? You are ready to do what? You strongly desire things, but you cannot get them, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. And even when you ask, you ask wrongly. And even when you are asking, you have a wrong intention to use them. And so it becomes a problem. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, some years back, when we went to the seminary, we finished philosophy, and after that, one of us could not continue for theology. Because of certain circumstances, he dropped and went back to the village, and then eventually he went to College of Education, got some other degrees, and then continued with his life. But he spent more time in the village. And so there was this quarrel between him and his brother over a piece of land. That mother was taken to the community, and the community elders looked at it and said the land belongs to him, and that his brother should remove his hand. And so the mother was settled, so he began to make use of the land. On this fateful day, he went to that land to farm, and while he was there farming, his brother came with matchet and butchered him to pieces at the farm. Greed. That was two years ago. From Omrelu. And he was buried. Greed. His life was taken because of what? Land. The same land his brother will be buried in. The same land he was buried. What is that thing you are pursuing in life that you think you have a control of it? You don't have a control of it. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 2 and verse 7 says, Both the rich and the poor are made by God. They walk the same place. But that the borrower will ever serve the rich. Why? Because of the path you have chosen. But God has made it that all of us be blessed. The divide you belong is your choice. So when you choose the path of greed, you choose the path of death because it leaves you empty at the end of your life. And finally, my dear friends, we all need to yield to God. Precisely on Wednesday this week, I went to Aquaibam where we went to bury one of my classmates. 
and a good friend of mine. He had been in this parish several years. During the COVID, we spent time together because he could not go back and Siwa was not in session. All through the COVID period, we were here. And then he finished last year and left for the diocese and he was posted somewhere. He went to sleep in the afternoon and he passed on. The cook did not prepare food on time, so he walked around the compound and went into sleep. And said to, said to the boy, when you're done, let me know or wake me so that I can eat. One o'clock, the boy said the booth food. Two o'clock, father was not out. Three o'clock, he was not out. Four, he was not out, which was unusual with him. If he's not eating, he will tell the boy he's not eating. And then at five, the boy discovered that, ah, father had not eaten, and so he went to look for father, only to discover that he was just there, dead on the bed. This is somebody who concluded his doctorate in Siwa. He has not collected his certificates. His certificate he has not collected. He's still in the institution, but he's gone. Dear friends, what is it we are all pursuing? Seek God and his righteousness and every other thing will be added unto you. Greed steals your life, steals someone's life. The Lord today asks us of self-emptying. Peace be with you. Let us rise and profess our faith in Christ Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. Live in one God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father. To him all things we are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father. We come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophet.